Hi guys, today's video is a bit of a response to the TMI episode that Pushing Up Roses recently did. Now my wife decided to take those questions and give them her own spin, so let's see how creative these questions are. I have not seen them before, I really wanted to not have a chance to see them so I can answer them live, and hopefully they're all appropriate for me to answer on camera, but we shall see. And afterwards, in the next video, I'm going to go interview Minx and see what her thoughts are. Question 1. In what ways are you the same as your childhood self? I'd say I'm the same as my childhood self in that I'm always seeking to know more. I always want to know more and explore more every day, and I really feel like if you didn't learn something new that day, in a lot of ways, that day is wasted. Not necessarily if you didn't learn something, but if you created something, if you pushed yourself forward, if you in some way added to your life, added to your knowledge base, added to what you're creating, that day to me is successful, whether it's a small success or big success, you know, big step or little step, that's something that I've always done, something where I would get frustrated with uh, school, especially in high school when we would do things that were just kind of time wasters, or things that were just monotonous or repetitive, or things where I had all these deep questions and wanted to take a conversation somewhere else, wanted to really explore the what and the why of different things and relate it to other things, and instead it was that's interesting, but we don't really have time for that, and we have just have to go over the facts so we can get to the next lesson. And I learned a lot more going through and studying on my own outside of school, and I think I've done a lot of that now into my adult life, really taking a lot of time researching things, being really fascinated with that type of thing. And the other thing that is definitely the same from when I was a kid, my entire life I have been incredibly stubborn. All right, so question two, what single message would you send to an advanced alien species? It's actually kind of a hard one, just a single message. I think the single message that I would send would be to not judge us on first impressions. That's something that it seems like a stupid message, it seems like I should send something philosophical or you know, some bullshit love conquers all or some, you know, some sort of montage of human achievements, but I think if we were contacted by extraterrestrial life in a world where we haven't already, ha I mean, not getting into anything like that, but talking about if there was a situation where there's never been any alien contact on Earth ever, and our first contact was sort of a 1940s, 50s sci-fi style where they come by and like land near the White House and their representative comes out to talk to our representative, that was the message I think I would send because in that situation I feel like they would have a curiosity about humanity because they were similar to humanity and that's what humanity would do. That's what we would automatically do, is judge them based upon that first impression from those those first ones that we see and speak to. And because our first encounter would more than likely in that type of situation be with heads of state, be with political leaders, be with people that we don't necessarily want to be judged by, people that we should be in a situation where elected officials represent how we want to be judged and a representation of us, but it's really the case. So I would say if I could only send a single message, a simple message, it would be to take the time to not judge us on first impressions before making a plan on how you want to interact with our species. How would you describe yourself in five words or less? I would say creative, curious, nostalgic, stubborn, and broke. Question four, how many countries have you been to? Uh, well, I live in the U.S., so I'll count the U.S. Canada, Mexico for like a day, um, Germany many times, Austria, um, England, and Japan. Question number five, what's the most romantic thing you've done for someone else? Probably when I proposed to my wife, I went to uh, my now in-law's house where she was and left a message for her by her car um, asking her to meet me in the park and I had a very serious question to, to ask her. I forget exactly how I worded it, um, but there's a park now near their house and I had a, a letter you know, coaxing her to come meet me in the park. I had something very important to tell her and I was going to then wait for her in the park all dressed up uh, with a ring and ask her to marry me and it was kind of a very funny situation because I had to go by the house and park down the street and try and sneak up to the house because I knew she was home obviously I wanted her to see it but I didn't want anyone to know that I was there and place this, this message and right before I got there the door opened 
and I sprinted over to her neighbor's driveway and hid around her neighbor's car. And she was the one, of course, who came out. It wasn't her parents or anyone who I could have been like, oh, okay, it's them, I'm doing this, and whatever. She came out, and she was just kind of very nicely watering flowers and things, and she went back in, I started to come out, she comes back out to take the dog out to the bathroom, and it was just forever, I'm sitting there, and it was really awkward because I'm all dressed up, and I'm sitting behind this car, trying to, like, watch her, looking like a creeper, and a couple people came down the street, and people are kind of like, hi, and I'm just worried that someone's gonna blow my cover, or, you know, call the cops, or her neighbors come out and say, who's this guy hiding behind our car, like, I was right up against their car, and thankfully, it all worked out, and I was able to get over there, and put the message up, and then I went sprinting down the street, making sure she didn't come back out, in, uh, got to, so I got to the park and I was actually like really really covered in sweat because it was um, getting warm out and it was the middle of the day and I'm wearing all these dress clothes and I hate the heat you know I'm a cold weather person anyway and I gave her a call made sure she you know, got went outside I had something to tell her and she found the note and eventually she made her way down to the park and I asked her to marry me and it's really funny because she said <laughs> I've never been more nervous in my life that was I was like practically hyperventilating and then on top of that all the heat was just so much worse and she always jokes that she says you know I only said yes because otherwise you would have died from heat stroke that day and it's really funny but I'd say just I don't know if that's the most romantic thing I've ever done but to me that's the most memorable romantic thing I've ever done and it was a just a beautiful situation that was you know obviously the best decision of my life how would you survive the zombie apocalypse uh, my wife and I actually disagree on this question I know um, <laughs> something that we fight over. She would very much like to stay in one area and hole up with lots of supplies and either like a group of people or find a way like just with us or like some family and really find a, lo a central location that we feel is safest and really focus on saving up that spot and really protecting that one spot. And I am the opposite where I want, want to be very minimalist and either just the two of us, you know, or maybe at most one or two other people and constantly moving, constantly traveling and not carrying heavy things, instead taking supplies from others rather than carrying our own supplies and being very... It's a difference in our personalities where I'm very aggressive and she is not aggressive at all. She's very much, you know, fight or flight, she would feel safer fleeing, which is, might be more logical in many situations where I would feel safer confronting something, fighting something. It's my immediate reaction. Uh, I mean, it's just a totally different thing where, you know, I have a thing where I have to sleep on our bed on the side that's facing the door to the room. I just, I cannot sleep. I cannot feel comfortable if she's on that side, even though it's, you know, it's ridiculous. Like, the likelihood of someone coming into the apartment complex and coming into our exact unit and coming the whole way into the bedroom, unlikely, but I can't do it. It doesn't matter where we are. If we're on vacation somewhere else, I have to be sleeping on the side by the door or I cannot sleep. I just have this very protective, aggressive personality. It's something where, you know, I, I don't believe in guns, or, but in case something happens, I do sleep with a machete by my bedside. Something, an odd trivia question for you now to know. <laughs> question seven. What are your fears? Kind of going along with the last question, I think. Um, and the whole idea of my stubbornness and wanting to constantly know and I get very agitated when I don't understand something. I have to comprehend something, even it's something I've never heard before. You know, let me say it's you know a theory that I've never explored before. I, it drives me insane until I've taken the time to research something and come up with my own conclusion. It drives me nuts. And that goes along with my fears are all based on control. The only two things I truly have a fear of are falling and being tied up or restricted to the point where I can't move. I'm not claustrophobic in any way. It all comes down to a situation where I cannot even make an attempt. Even if it's something where, say it's like the end of Crisis Core, and I'm Zack and I'm standing and being gunned down by a hundred men shooting at me, I'm not as afraid of that as I would be falling from a high tree. Because in that situation, even though it's impossible, I'm guaranteed to die 100%. I can at least make an effort. I can try and run. I can try and dodge bullets. I can try and run towards them. I can make an effort, even though it's a futile effort, it's an effort. Where if I'm free falling from something and there's nothing to grab onto, there's nothing I can do, and it's it's really high, I can't even make an effort. There's nothing you can do in that situation. You can't even make a futile effort. 
And the same thing with being like tied up or buried in sand or something. If As long as I can still move, I'm perfectly fine. I don't feel claustrophobic in any way, even if I'm incredibly restricted. If I can still move, I'm fine. But as soon as I am not in control, as soon as I can't move, as soon as I'm relying on someone else to help me out of that situation, I can't stand it. it drives, I start to panic. And those are really the only two things that I would consider to be true fears in the traditional sense. The other thing is I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to something that is solely my creation, something that is meaningful to me to where I have an absolute fear of failure because I have trouble seeing the own worth in what I create. If something, you know, I took something and I made something, if someone else had made that exact same work, it would seem much better to me. And I feel like though that's a common thing, I don't feel like that's really a true unique fear. I think that's just part of human nature. Some people are just more afraid of that, you know, fear of failure than others. I think it's a more manageable thing and I think it's a universal thing that is just to what degree are you, do you have that fear or not? Do you have that fear or not? Number eight, in what position do you sleep? <laughs> My wife makes fun of me for this one. Um, she always has to, she says she always like pats me on the back and makes sure I'm alive in the middle of the night because I sleep on my stomach with my face basically in the pillow and for some reason in the middle of the night I don't didn't know I did it even for the longest time while I'm in the middle of sleeping in the middle of the night I'll actually apparently in my sleep take the pillow and have my face buried in the mattress with the pillow over the back of my head and lying down on my stomach and somehow I've never suffocated obviously because I'm talking to you and I'm not a ghost number nine if you could live in a video game which would it be um, well, I think it's a hard decision because there are a lot of worlds in video games I would like to live in, but as far as living in a world during the course of the game, I think I'll add that to it because something like Xenoblade Chronicles World, I would love to live in. But if I don't add the stipulation of it being before the course of the game, I end up in the midst of this massive conflict that I'm more than likely going to be dying in. So in one way, if I could choose when I'm living in a game, you know, in a game world, it would be Xenoblade Chronicles World. I would love to live on the Bionis side of that. If it's within the course of a game, within the timeline of a game, I would say Shenmue 2, I would love to live in Hong Kong in that area. So those would be my two choices depending on what context you take that question in. Number 10, who's your celebrity crush? Everyone always has celebrity crushes, and they, they change as time moves on, but my number one celebrity crush that has never changed since I was a kid, number one for all time, absolutely like you know, part of her fan sites growing up all the time, Laura Bertram. From watching Ready or Not as a kid, and Night of the Twisters, and seeing her on the episode of Alone in the Dark, to being a teenager, and growing up watching things like Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda, Transgemini, such a great character, even some more like Canadian series later on, like Robinson Arms. I mean, just absolutely everything. Hands down, celebrity crush. And my wife always makes fun of me. Uh, we would watch uh, Supernatural a lot, especially in the early seasons, and she would typically tape it and sometimes watch it before me, and then I would come home uh, from work or come over to her place and we'd either watch it for the first time she had not seen it or rewatch it as she had seen it like live many times. And there was one episode where I forget exactly what was happening, but Sam was talking to the roommate of someone who was killed, and the screen shows just sort of like the floor, and then kind of pans up to the coffee table, and you see their legs, and it moves up to their knees, and you finally see their faces, but they start talking that whole time. And I think roughly a syllable into Laura Bertram's first line, when you could just see kind of the floor, I freaked out and like, you didn't prepare me for this, you didn't tell me she was in this, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I was freaking out. And she had no idea because until she actually saw her face and like for a few seconds and she spoke a few lines then she recognized who it was. And that's when I realized I, I maybe like this person a little too much when it took a syllable for me to know who it was. But my celebrity crush, Laura Bertram. If it were possible, would you own a pet dinosaur? Absolutely not. I don't want to die, and even if I had a herbivore of some kind, a smaller herbivore, I wouldn't want to feed it or clean up its giant elephant-sized dumps. 
So, no, I would not like a pet dinosaur. What's your least favorite food? There are a lot of foods I don't like, particularly vegetables. I am a big meat guy. I'm a big, I eat lots of fruit. Um, I love, I like salads as far as you know, like lettuce, carrots, you know, that kind of thing. But there are a lot of vegetables I don't like. But if I had to choose one thing as my least favorite food, natto would be the horrible Japanese concoction of death would be my least favorite thing. That, to me, I just the most horrendous thing I've ever put in my mouth, and yeah. If you had to describe yourself as an animal, what would it be? Definitely a canine of some sort. Uh, my wife definitely compares me to a dog all the time, and not as in, like, you dirty dog, you did terrible things. I do a lot of things that, for some reason, remind her of canines, and <laughs> another thing, too, would be loyalty. I'm fiercely loyal to people. Once I really bring you into what would be my inner circle, I am just could never betray that. And I, I think I would say a wolf if I had to pick a dog specifically, uh, you know, some sort of canine. Um, more so also because while I have that loyalty and that pack mentality, I'm very much in a way also a loner and definitely need to have that kind of aggressive, kind of like alpha male personality. So definitely I'd say a wolf. Question 14, what's your favorite book? Um, actually, I have it right here. It'll be Deep Space Nine Warped. And obviously, this is not the greatest book ever written. It's very well written, but I would never put it up there as even coming close to something like Dune or Lord of the Rings. But for me, it is my favorite book of all time for a lot of reasons. One, because as far as tie-in novels to Deep Space Nine, which is my favorite TV show of all time, it is my favorite one. I think it is some, one of the best written ones. I think it definitely captures the spirit and the essence of the series. I really enjoy it. And not only is it my favorite Star Trek book overall, but it becomes my favorite book of all time because of personal experiences with it. We used to, the old library in my hometown before they moved across town to this big, nice new place, was actually down the street from my house where I could take my bike and ride down and get lots of books. And this was one I would get. And after a while, they started getting a lot of sci-fi books on tape. And it was perfect where, that was the time in my life where every single summer my dad would take me out camping. And I would take my little tape player and I would get books on tape and I would listen to them on the car ride there and the car ride back. And I would also occasionally listen to them by the campfire before going to sleep or, you know, sometimes I would take them on the hiking trail. Not always, occasionally I would just be, like to be, you know, more in the sounds of nature, but it was something where I would usually listen to a book during that trip, and I'd also take books on tape to listen to by the pool or on like longer trips, sometimes when we went abroad, uh, visit family in Germany and things like that. And there were, they had all kinds of different ones, and I get different ones all the time. But this was one that I got every single time. I really wish, if I could find that, I don't think it was ever transferred to CD or digital. If it was, if you know that it was, <laughs> let me know. Um, I would, that I would love to have. I mean, if I, I would actually go out and buy another old cassette player, buy a couple of them for backups, and buy, like, that book on tape. I just said, I loved it. I loved the story. I love, they added so much with, like, really nice music and atmosphere and sound effects, and I loved the narrator, and to me, it was just, it, it, I got into the story so much more, and it made me almost feel like that old sitting in front of the radio, like, you know, it's before television. To me, for some reason, that book on tape was so special to me, and it was one of my favorite stories, just kind of brought to life in my mind, and I just wanted to experience it over and over again. By far, that is my favorite book of all time for many different reasons. Question 15, your favorite athlete? That would be Kai Greene. Kai Greene is, to me, more than just my favorite athlete. If I had to pick someone who would be a personal hero, someone who I look up to, who is not someone that I really know. A lot of the people that I would define as a hero in my life are people that I have, like, family members or, or, or you know, friends or people that, like, a coach or someone. Someone like that would be more fit, more my definition of someone I look up to who had a serious effect on my life. But that would be the one celebrity person, the one individual I don't really know personally that I would definitely say I look up to as a hero even though he is in a career that I would have no interest of going into, his mentality, his intelligence, his just philosophies on life, I really enjoy listening to him, and I really 
implement a lot of what he says and what he does into my life even though I'm on a completely different path, I just find guidance and comfort in his journey and what he does and who he is and what he represents. Kai Green to me, by far my favorite athlete and I'm not a big sports guy but he's someone who brought me into some more uh, sort of the sports realm through bodybuilding. I really became a fan because of him and Kai Green to me is just a really fascinating celebrity that I would say is by far my favorite athlete. Number 16, what TV show character are you most like? That's a hard one. I'd say teenage me would fit a lot into Yusuke Urameshi. <laughs> I'd say me now. I am in a lot of ways, you could compare my wife and I a lot to Worf and Jadzia on Deep Space Nine. I'm kind of a mix between Worf and Sisko, uh, Captain S Benjamin Sisko. I Number 17, what's your favorite video game? Up until a few years ago, that would have been Xenogears. That would have kind of held that place for, I think, close to 14 years of my life where that was my favorite game. Uh, but recently that changed, right back here. My favorite video game of all time, Xenoblade Chronicles. Absolutely love this game. To me, if you think of what would be your perfect video game, that impossible thing that would be made just for you, as everything that you like about video games personally without the things you dislike, it's going to be a completely different game for everyone. There's a reason why that game cannot exist unless you make it yourself. Xenoblade Chronicles for me is the closest I could ever get to that dream, that perfect video game that has everything that I want in a game, and it's just missing a few things from Xenogears that I would put into it, but other than that, it's like 90% my perfect video game. I don't see it ever being surpassed as my favorite game of all time. Xenoblade Chronicles, absolutely love it. Question number 18, were you named after anyone? Uh, my first name, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just because Stefan was a very popular German boy's name for my age group. Uh, Stefan Homburger, very German name. Uh, middle name though, I was named after my godfather, Bud Daniker, and both my siblings are the same way. The middle names are named after one of their godparents. What would your weapon of choice be? A battle axe. Favorite color? Blue. Blue in all varieties, pretty much. I would say maybe navy blue if I had to absolutely pick a variety of blue, but overall just blue in any form, and I really like blue with white or blue with silver or blue with black. To me, those are the greatest color combinations that I really like. If you were a superhero, what powers would you have? Basically the Hulk, because I sometimes lose the ability to think rationally when I get incredibly angry. Uh, something that was much worse when I was younger, <laughs> much better now, but I definitely think that would mean my superpowers would definitely be more like the Hulk. Are you a sarcastic person? No, never. What's your zodiac sign? Well, you could probably guess that considering I keep talking about myself being stubborn and aggressive and focused on perfectionism and I was born in May, I'm a Taurus. Number 24. When was the last time you had a bowel movement? <laughs> About four hours ago. <laughs> Number 25, what sports have you played? Uh, when I was really little, I played soccer. It's something very common around my area. And eventually I got into cross country and track and field in high school. If you ruled a country, how long do you think it would be before you were assassinated? I don't know. <laughs> Assassinated, I think I would probably more than likely die before that in a conflict. I think that I would definitely have a system probably more like a Klingon Warbird, where if I do something that is obviously not in the best interest of my crew, it's something where it's an unreasonable thing where my decision my ability to make decisions is in question. Someone can challenge me for my position if they're my direct subordinate 
and take my position. I feel like I'd be more likely to die in that situation than an assassination. I don't think people would dare try that. What's your most unattractive quality? Probably that bowel movement I took four hours ago. Number 28. Have you ever been in a physical fight or altercation with another person? Yes. <laughs> Several times. Uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Number 29. Are you a neat or messy person? That really depends. My work area is always messy. I find more organization in random piles uh, and things I don't really care about. Um, for instance, until we do dishes and things, the kitchen can be kind of messy, things like that. But when it comes to things like my game collection or our books or things that I truly care about, incredibly neat and organized and always clean. So it depends on what you're talking about. Overall, probably messy would be the overall choice, but in certain instances, definitely neat and organized. Number 30. Do you consider yourself emotionally stable? <laughs> 31. If you had to choose, would you rather live underground or in space? Definitely in space. As long as that means in like a space station in sort of Star Trek level technology, not floating out in space without anything, because then I'd be dead. 32. What's your favorite season? Winter. I hate summer with an absolute passion. Anything over like 70 degrees is way too much for me. I, I cannot handle it. I would rather be out in the snow in 20 degree weather with my shirt off. Like to me, that's comfortable. Anything over 70, deadly. Absolutely hate it. Cannot stand summer. Spring is getting a little too much. Fall I like, but winter. 33. Who is your favorite Muppet? Animal. Definitely animal. 34. What's your favorite anime? Neon Genesis Evangelion. Definitely my favorite anime of all time, one of my favorite shows of all time. And number 35, the last question here. Who would you like to see answer these questions next? So I guess kind of like a pass on, see who I'd like to hear answer these questions I'd be curious about. I mean, anyone can do this. I would love to see a response video. I posted these exact questions below in the description so you can see them or maybe make a few changes if you want to answer something different. But I'd love to see your answers, please. And if I'm picking out specific people, I would really like to see Playongo or Sega CD Universe do a response to this. I'd like to hear your answers.